Turning now to the U.S. debt ceiling saga, some economists are warning of a serious fallout for Americans if a standoff occurs in Congress. And if negotiations are unsuccessful, the country could default on its debt. In that event, there are concerns that Social Security and Medicare benefits would stop going out. We hear more from an expert on the Treasury's moves to postpone a disaster and some solutions to the problem. Joining us now is Vance Ginn, president of Ginn Economic Consulting and senior fellow at Young Americans for Liberty. Thank you for coming on the show, Vance. It's a pleasure to be with you today. The Treasury Department initiated so-called extraordinary measures after the country hit its debt limit on Thursday. First, can you explain how these measures work to avoid a default? Well, yes, we reached our debt limit of $31.4 trillion with a T. It's a massive amount of national debt that's increased from government spending over a number of years. You know, the federal government has already raised the national debt limit uh, 78 times just since 1960. So this has been a massive increase. The last time we haven't had a national debt was in the 1830s under Andrew Jackson. And so we've seen a massive increase in the debt over time. um, And this is something that's going to take extraordinary measures by the Treasury in order to pay on the interest on the debt over time. The Federal Reserve may even be able to get involved. But, but Kevin, at the end of the day, this is just excessive government spending. So you touch on the fiscal policy that's resulted in what we have now. So some reports are claiming that this round of debt ceiling drama could be different, that there's a chance it might not work itself out and that the impacts will be short-lived. Could we be in for a financial crisis? And what are the solutions to this recurring problem? I think this is the reason why it's so important to have a debt limit. Just like individuals and people, you wouldn't want them to not have a credit card limit to just run up a massive amount of debt that they couldn't pay. This is not Congress's money. This is the people's money. And so they should be spending more conservatively over time. Um, This is one reason why I'm in favor of a spending limit, something that really limits the growth of spending to population growth plus inflation. Because if not, you get this rampant spending, the rampant debt, and the massive amount of inflation all around us throughout the economy. This is just um, irresponsible. We need responsible American budgets that grow by no more than the average taxpayer's ability to pay for them. And ultimately, they should be spending less, Kevin, because it's just infiltrating throughout our entire economy and creating economic distortions along the way. We've had wars that were that consumed a lot of money, infrastructure packages, and I know you're talking about a spending limit, which is a concept. J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said the debt ceiling is not something we should be playing around with. He said regarding the debt ceiling, it's part of the financial structure of the world. Can you give us just a sheer scope of what we're dealing with here? The United States economy is massive, right? Uh, Over $20 trillion. Now we've got over $30 trillion in debt. That is 120% of GDP, our entire economy. But the United States economy, being how large it is and being the connected um, international trade with, with trade and everything else that's going on, this is a global economy that happens. And so if the United States can't pay its debt, then that's going to have other repercussions for the rest of the world. Higher interest rates, um, less money that's going to pay for the debt in other countries, and they may be using some of that to pay for their government spending as well. Um, And so this does have a repercussions across the global economy. The Biden administration and Congress have about six months to prevent a default. The White House press secretary said Congress must deal with the debt limit and do so without conditions. What do we expect to happen here? I think that's irresponsible to not have conditions put in place to raise the debt limit. Basically, you're raising the credit card without saying you need to spend less or have spending restraint in the process. That's just clearly irresponsible. And so there has to be a situation where we're spending less, putting some sort of guidelines in place, kind of like the Budget Control Act of 2011, I think would be a good one. So if you're going to spend more, we need to have cuts in other areas to not continue to run up the massive debt that we have. And look, just on the national interest Uh, net interest on the debt alone is going to be over a trillion dollars soon. So I don't care if somebody's a Republican, a Democrat, a Libertarian, or someone else, we can all think about better ways to spend over a trillion dollars. And ultimately, a lot of that should be back in the pockets of Americans with lower taxes and, and, and everything else. And so, look, this is at the end of the day, we need a responsible budget that puts in place spending restraint, and that will allow us to have a more prosperous future. About a trillion dollars in interest, that certainly is a challenge. Vance Ginn, president of Ginn Economic Consulting and senior fellow at Young Americans for Liberty, really do appreciate your analysis on this. Thanks so much. Have a great day.